Hello and welcome back to another Reverse 1999 episode. Uh, let's do a few things that I forgot to do in the last episode, which is check. Does McCorn Bloom have a unique coat? Hello. No, she does not. Uh, you see, I've been doing this where I save the last one and record it, just in case they say something like they did with Sineto or with DK, where if you arrive at like 50 or 60 percent, she asks you, do you think justice delivered late is justice or something? Anyways, I, I just, I wanted to have that on camera. Anyways, next thing on the agenda, uh, Sineto. I forgot to portray her. Actually, maybe I did portray her. Where did her thing go? I'm pretty sure I claimed one of those. I just bought a rare and strong Which, bike She's Greetings. level two. Where did I claim that? Was it in story? Here? It is here, yeah, that's right. Okay, so we forgot to do this thing, which uh, is kind of troll from my end, I apologize on that. And yeah, we Greetings. can portray her and we can, and more importantly, <laughs> awaken her or insight her because uh, I don't know. For how much I use Sanato, I think it's worth it. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I think I can craft this. I can 100% craft this. I'm just lacking this one material. This one material. I am trolling. I apologize. I am stupid. I should have gotten this off camera. So instead, I guess we're gonna keep Sanato at inside too. Ideally, ideally we get her max portrait. Because again, we use Sanato too much here. Anyways, well, let's resume main story. Ideally we get two stars, get the 330 thing, claim the tears, see if it's enough to roll. Number six, the empty ship. It returned as scheduled, yet empty handed. Now we are listening to the new year collection. The world-famous painting Mona Lisa was found and returned to Musée de Louvre in the afternoon of December 13th. The U.S. Congress passed the Federal Reserve Act on December 23rd, formally establishing the Federal Reserve System. The conflict between Austria-Hungary and Serbia has escalated. Bulgaria challenged the Bucharest Peace Treaty. Tension is building up over the Balkan Peninsula. In London, Futurists gathered under Big Ben, celebrating the upcoming 1914. This 1914. Is news of the outside world? Senator puts Miss Radio on her ears, paying full attention to the unfamiliar news. After the snatches of news, when the channel knob has I been turned to the right... Side. Okay. Sure. Well, I am with Sophia. Arcana's still in the hall. She hasn't taken any action so far. Got it. Please keep an eye on the Manus followers. Be mindful of the restrictions set by the Bangle. Who are you talking to? Senato immediately hides Miss Radio behind her. Just checking up on Lilia. Please stay vigilant during the patrol. This is the last place we need to check. On the white, soft beach there are several geometrical bodies in different shapes. Some have sunk deep in the sand while others still standing unyieldingly. Just like a minimalist art expedition, which is we a scam. We must keep this graveyard clean. Our dead deserve to be left in peace and undisturbed by the phenomenal world. Sophia gets down on one knee before a cone-shaped body, dusting it meticulously. Miss Sophia, you said this is the graveyard? Her hand quivers a little. Yes. The Geometry Graveyard, it is called. Four years ago, my father was restored to a geometric body on his way back to the island. So was 37's mother, who was also on that ship. Hmm. Why are you crying, Sophia? Oh, I didn't expect child 37 in main story. I was wrong. We calculated it wrong, 37. We miscalculated the impacted area of the emanation. We thought the ships would be safe in the Gorgon current. But the safe area is in fact five degrees away. When the emanation happened, the bow of their ship had just entered the safe area. But it was too late. My dad is gone. So is your mom. 
I know. But why are you crying? No, oh, hell no. Not this. <laughs> I mean, it's expected out of 37, but damn, this is. The art goes wild, though. My mom and your dad have come back to us. Right? Have come back. Do you call this? Coming back? Like this? In the form of geometric bodies? Cold and silent. Being pushed to the shore? 37 frowns, looking confused, but then the corner of her lips turn up. As usual, she works out the answer within seconds. Swift and precise. No. They have gone somewhere further. Look at them. These geometric bodies. How pure and how elegant. I've never seen such perfect geometric bodies before. If they are not from the eternal and transcendental world of forms, how should we explain this? 37? I'm going to study the emanation, Sophia. This is the best chance ever. A transcendental world finally opens its door to us. We will reach our hands to the forms and explore the oldest and eternal laws. Will you help me, Sophia? Next time. Next time I will definitely make a better calculation. I promise. That's cute. Except we know what 37 looks like today. Uh, not much of an improvement. Waves lap against the beach. In the fine sand, the, the geometrical shapes are bathed unyieldingly in the moonlight. Despite the endless tides, they maintain their form, never eroded, nor washed away by time. Which again, implies the question, why is the storm, uh, like is the storm a, glo a global phenomenon? Jeez, oh, I cannot speak. Why is the foundation immune? Uh, I want to know. What is the foundation's location? I know the foundation has several branches. Uh, again, I didn't think about this until the last video, which is, does the storm cover the entire world or are there specific areas exempt from it? And another thing is, Melania event, which is chapter zero, then you have... The Miss Tooth Fairy event, which happens after the story, I like, yeah, that, that's a little weird, that's a little weird. I would wager Jessica's story happens after chapter 5, maybe even after chapter 6, we don't know the exact time frame. And then Miss Kalabauna event, I actually forgot when that event is. I mean, Matilda's 14 in that event, and she's currently 14, so I think it happens within the same year. And then what? Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're here. An eternal moment. Sophia lowers her head as if she is trying to cut herself out of a miserable memory. Thank you for assisting 37 with her research, Sneto. Hmm? No, I didn't do anything. Timekeeper knows the storm better. You have helped us greatly by just coming onto this island. For all this time, 37 has been locked up in the laboratory, refusing to talk to anyone nor participate in any group study since the two-day emanation in 1929. It is you who helped her revive her interest in other affairs in Apiron. These are Timekeeper's contributions. I barely did anything. Uh, you know, we like Sineto because she's the humblest one of us all. Sophia smiles bitterly and looks away. I can't help 37 because I don't see the charm of numbers. I lack the perception that an integer should have. That's why I can't see my own number. The number's... charm? Sorry, I have never thought about this. For me, Arcanum is my inborn mission. If you ask me, you are an unbelievably excellent Arcanus. You can flatten the ground, clean up the beach, and rectify errors. You did it in an efficient and precise manner, which is already an advanced ritual. Sonato has nodded three times in a row, if you noticed. Any students who have sworn to knowledge can do this easily. They aren't doing my job because they wish not to waste time on these trivial fragments of the phenomenal world. Because they have seen the truth. I mean, again, it sounds like a cult. For real, for real. You know, you will never understand it, but they do. The world is never complete. Like, you can never draw a perfect circle there. No matter how much time you spend on it or how sophisticated your device is, 
It is impossible to draw a perfect circle in the phenomenal world. Arrows always exist. The floating points after the decimal can be reduced, but not destroyed. The perfect circle only exists in the abstract transcendental world, of course. Anyone in the world can find out the value of pi through the most primitive method. Egyptians, Greeks, Chinese, and Babylonians. They have all tried. They made circles with twine, painted on the ground with twigs, or measured the land with cubit rods. But none of them actually drew a perfect circle. However different their practices were, they found out the sole truth, the approximate value of pi, because the essence of the circle is hiding in the imperfect manifestation of it. What is Bro talking about? This is the truth. It is eternal, unchanged, pure, and transcendent. Anyone can reach out to it at any time, in any place, by any means, and everyone will get the same answer from it. The forms transcend all matters. <laughs> Photoshop glasses on her eyes just now. Her gaze is firm but distant. The world of matters we live in is being flooded and destroyed by the tides of Numa. When the tides recede, what is left on the beach is the essence. Uh, this doesn't sound right. Let me think. How come your theory reminds me of the Manus Doctrine? 37. We see the storm very differently, among all the other things. We saw it first of all as a disaster. But earthquakes, floods, volcanic eruptions, these are also disasters. These catastrophic events happen not because they have a reason to destroy. They just happen in this world, like we do. An interesting proposal. This is what my mother taught me. She must be proud that she's a perfect geometric body now. You know, maybe the maybe the entire world did get stormed multiple times. And we just have no idea. It's just, this time, the storm couldn't storm everyone, so we actually have an idea that it exists. After all, if there was a perfect storm that wiped the entire Earth, then, in theory, that would mean that we have no recollection of it, no? I don't know, maybe I'm stupid. I'm sorry for mentioning your mother. 37 frowns. Why do you apologize, Furton? Are you feeling guilty? This is a very unusual feeling for a number like you. I don't get it. Why did you say my number is zero? To be continued, unlucky. You know, how dare you, Everton? How dare you ask a basic question? Are you expecting an answer? Damn, two cutscenes in a row. Unlucky. I was hoping to battle, but hey. <laughs> I ain't complaining. I just saw it. The numbers of everything and every being would just emerge in front of me. I see it, and I speak it out loud. That's it. 210 told me numbers imply our fate. 37 frowns more deeply. Don't believe him, Verton. Numbers are just numbers. I know nothing about fate. Hmm. Fine. I don't think I like 210. And the feeling goes both ways for us. You know, you said something based for once. Because I once said he is a poor number. 210 equals 2 times 3 times 5, times 7. He is the product of all prime numbers between 1 and 10. Looks like he has it all. But he doesn't have any real forte. He likes to sugarcoat himself with metaphors. Only those with a flawed essence would adore the trickery of words. This is indeed an extreme comment. And 6 is no better. Every leader of a Piron has been a 6. Six is the perfect number since it equals the sum of all its proper divisors. One plus two plus three equals six. No way. But this number has been overrated. He's not that special. Swear on your god that one plus two plus three equals six. Just swear and I'll believe you. What about your number? 
What does 37 mean? I don't know. She pushes, she purses her lips. I am 37. I've known it since I was born. So does everyone else. People told me what it means. But I have never tried to prove their theory. I know very little of fate. So I always think, even if I find out their essences, does it mean I have known them better? Thirty-seven once tried to tell me my number. Sophia takes a deep breath. She wrote it down and put it into a bottle, but I couldn't get up the courage to open it. I didn't want to know. I once made a horrible mistake. An unforgivable miscalculation. It makes me worried. That I may also be a mistake. Then keep your name Sophia. Why believe in your number? Contradict your number actually. God damn, when she's sad she actually looks sad. What the hell? So I threw the bottle into the sea. Yeah, damn. The CGI always goes wild. I mean, look at those birds. They're not even properly drawn. They're just a few strokes and then they just look so good. God damn. They cooked with this one. She stops her patrol and turns back briskly. This is how 37 is different from us. We are all prisoners of that cave. Only the wise one can find her way out of the cave and return to rescue the rest of us. I'm the ignorant prisoner who sits. And she's the wise one who returns. I will be crushed into dust by the truth, while she will be the star shining above it. Yes, she had heard the fable, but never quite like this version. The red-haired red girl lets out a sigh, Raises her gaze out above the sea at the twinkling night sky. Sonetto's gasping or something. The truth is like the stars in the night sky. Beautiful. But cold. It has been there long before my existence. And will stay that way long after I'm gone. It sheds no tears for the weak. Nor laments the tragic fate. It's forever bright and always moving forward. The person who avoids the truth is not qualified to study it. Arcane a moment? I'm sorry. My interpretation has been emotional. No. I think I kind of know how you feel, Miss Sophia. However unworthy you think you are, there must be something we can do. Maybe we can't reach the core of the truth, but we can clean up the path to it for the future explorers. This is our fate. Interesting insight. I have come to understand why 37 likes you so much. Let us go back to work then. Start from dusting the tombstones. Alright, I've had enough of these Sol Numa related idle topics. For once I agree with Regulus. I mean, I am interested in this storm, but not in the way they're explaining it. I want to have a look at your model. Wow, seriously, how did you get this far? Regulus eagerly pokes her head over, but 37 is faster. She has switched off the computer swiftly. This model has been proven wrong. For four whole years we had been optimizing it. But the emanation in 1929 only lasted for two days. Which means our calculation was entirely a failure. That model is just like this computer. It's a piece of junk. And this is all I can present to you. 37 drops her head looking sad. And we get the reconnect. It's so over. It's so jover. Man, I really want to resume the let's play. But if it keeps reconnecting, I will lose my mind. No. It's not junk. I think I know why your model didn't work. W what? Manus Vindicte has changed history. They accelerated history, forcing historical events to happen earlier than they were supposed to. Thus, the storm in 1929 occurred sooner than it should- No way! Wait, 
that soundtrack. We're back on track. <laughs> I got nostalgic for a second. I imagined Forget Me Not. Man. Man. <laughs> 37 stares at her in astonishment, her shoulders shiver. Controlling the emanation. Changing the history of the outside world. Numa is eternal and transcendental. It won't obey any orders given from the phenomenal world. Neither will it change its patterns because of some fragments. I'm telling the truth, 37. I've been there. In the storm of 1929, your model was not wrong. You just missed some key information. You've never been to the place where the storm falls, and thus know nothing about the symptoms of the storm syndrome and the true purposes of Manus Vindicte. No! That's impossible! Yep. You went to... Her. This is what Virgin did, right? She just went to 37's house and just brought 37's book and said, Yo, you're wrong. And then 37's like, Why? What do you mean I'm wrong? And then Timekeeper is like, Hey, listen. Your mother? She died. And I know why. And so 37's like, What do you mean? Tell me. <laughs> why did my mother die then? And Virton is like, L plus ratio. That's basically what happened. Even if there are means to control the emanation, it wouldn't be like this. If this is true, does it mean the phenomenal world, this insignificant phenomenal world, is more transcendental? Mother's model was defeated by this? She holds herself with a pale face, as if making a tough decision. Eventually, she speaks up again with great difficulty. Virtin, could you give us proof? The proof that Manus Vindicte accelerated history and triggered the emanation. I swear I wasn't lying. No, not like this. To prove it in front of a Piron. Go to our sacred place. To the Hall of Truth. In the depths of the cave. There. Everyone can see the essence of the world. I beg you. Give them your proof, just like how we submit the proof of our soul number. To be continued. Unlucky. Things were just getting interesting. Hey. <laughs> hey. I dig. I dig with this. <sighs> you know what else I don't dig? This narrator. Come here. Place your hand on it. Feel the Texture. The craft is one of a kind, not some cheapy you can get from the flea market. I mean it. This is a Keelian, and even the most traditional, delicate, and expensive kind. It has applied fiery red as the dominant color, and the stitches are perfectly neat. <sighs> from the sea, it arrived with a meerschaum pipe. A glass jar, a pack of sugar cubes, and a child in panic. Both she and the Keely were born on the land where the craft originated. Their appearances apply the same dominant color, and the patterns in them share similar complexity. I'm assuming Sophia. Oh, your curiosity is aroused. No. But we are not done with the carpets yet. You've always got to get a souvenir or two every time you reach a new place. So you will have something to show when you tell the stories one day, right? No, 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 no. I'm not curious. I just had no choice but to talk with your face. Look at these handmade fabrics. How Shut up. But they are just people like us. What if Shut they... up. Then you will be in trouble. Big trouble. All the problems in the universe will come at you. And the situation will be even worse than the bureaucratic system of a millennial empire. I don't want to react with damn it, damn it, damn it. But I also don't want to respond with can't we do something to fix it? Because frankly speaking, I could not give a shit. <sighs> Calm down. They always step into the same river named Mistake again and again. That's why we need them. Those crossing the river with their rulers, spanners, toolboxes, and dusty faces. Engineers. The correctors. Their duty is to remove the loose threads and iron out the wrinkles on the carpets. In the language of this island, that is to check. No one is capable of doing this job except the altruists, because it is similar to unraveling a ball of wool. And she 
the red-haired little girl with the carpet in her arms was overwhelmed at the beginning. Not yet familiar with the ruler, she tried her best to find the end of the threads. Sophia. So the cats took the opportunity to jump on her together and left. See, that's the problem every corrector has to deal with. Their job is to correct errors. But what if their own existence is also part of the errors? Oh, it's no big deal. There is more than one loom in this world. She left the complicated patterns behind and came to this simple kingdom featuring numbers only. There she made the first contact with a spinning loom named Geometry. She had never seen anything like that before. And it was without a whole picture of what she was working on, she resorted to her hard work and more hard work. In the end, her hands were no longer tender, but tough enough to resist the damage from the loom. Yes, she has won a place on this island for herself. Yes, she's a quick learner. She learned even faster than some of the locals. But that was not enough. And now she's going to refer to 37. She matched by her playmate. The leading one in the field of mathematics on the island. That girl is like a perfect piece of satin born by nature. It is decorated by the beauty of mathematics and geometry. No manual work involved. In order to reach the showcase where that perfect piece lies, and to stay on the right track and fit into the school, she has done everything she could. But, but... She is still the most distinctive carpet there. Anyone can tell that as long as they spend some time on the island. Oh, of course not. She's only a bit different from others. So she will continue to weave on the loom until one day the spindle pierces her callus and the fire burns everything to the ground. Shh. I should stop here. You know that mathematician who is thrown into the sea? He died because he said something he shouldn't have. Cut not wood on a public road. Open not an unwanted bottle. <sighs> I don't know what to say next. I guess the best line for this circumstance is... See you later. See you never, I hope. <laughs> I don't know, she doesn't say anything interesting or of value. I listened because maybe it's Sophia 37 lore. But it's not, it's just nothing. I guess, free tears? Not even, it's just plus one on the drops. And, well, let's open it, claim it, relieve you off your misery. 350 clear drops, eh, that's pretty good. I didn't even notice a part of the island is right here. And so, what's left on our agenda? Can we summon for six? Not yet, we're missing 260. Let's check our tasks. So we can claim this. That's 30. We can get another 60 here. Mm. I guess let's check our I'm units. Not good at dealing with visitors. Mm -hmm. Unlock. I am not reading that word. Eesh. Mm -hmm. Claim some more tears here. Bada bing, bada boom. Is that enough? That is not enough. We just need 50 more. Speak. I shall speak. Boom. And there we go. Now we have enough to do a multi. Let's go. Six. The man, the myth, the legend. I believe we did 30 summons for you. So this should be summon number 40. Unfortunately, pity is not on our side, so... Let's hope we don't cope this summon. Hey, a golden spark is always a good spark. So you're saying we have four or five stars, but no six. Understandable. Oh? Never mind. I don't like... I don't think I'll use baby blue under any circumstances ever. DK, please, please. Yeah. Silence. Speak. From whence dost thou hail, and what is thy purpose? 
Hell yeah! We got another DK, which is actually pretty hype. I love me some DK. What? Click? Yep. I don't think there's another 5 star of the same element. It's all just click. Bacorn? Are you a brave speaker? You look like one. Hmm. And sound like two. <laughs> I don't know why that made me chuckle. Another Bacorn Boom. You know, we're already max portrayed with Bacorn Boom. I mean, I won't complain, it's another Bacorn Boom. I guess, uh, maybe we get more of those huh? bonus pity things. No I guess let's just go and uh, awaken or portray Speak. our DK. Powers effect changes too, so I guess we improve our first card, which is... We improve it by 20% actually, not the worst. 20, okay, yeah, that this is pretty good. We improve it by a lot actually. 20% level 1, 30% level 2, and 50% level 3. That is pretty big. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you on the next episode, where I actually, Greetings. hopefully, Today you insight Sonetto. Well. Goodbye.